In this video, we are going over how to analyze a soccer game. I'm going to be showing you how I personally analyze a soccer game and a few different ways you can analyze them as well. So usually when I analyze a game, I give myself some rules to follow. Typically, I will always just analyze the person who plays in my position. So for example, if I'm watching Barcelona play, I'll watch Suarez. If I'm watching Real Madrid play, I might watch Benzema or Ronaldo. If I'm watching Liverpool play, I might watch Firmino or Sturridge. If I'm watching Chelsea play, I'll watch Morata. Um, because I'm a striker myself, I want to be paying close attention to what the strikers on different teams are doing. Because this is not only going to show me what they're doing when they have the ball, but almost more importantly, it's going to show me what they're doing off the ball. This is something not a lot of players consider when they're watching matches. It's not always what the player does with the ball, it's what they do off it. What's their movement like? What kind of runs do they make? How do they create space for themselves and their teammates so that they can receive the ball? So this is how I typically do it. You don't have to do it in this way, but it's something I highly recommend you do do. So before you sit down to analyze the game, determine which players you're going to pay the most attention to. So you don't have to choose just one player. You can do both strikers on both teams. Um, if you're watching Bayern Munich, for example, and you're a winger, maybe you can watch Robin and Ribéry if they're both playing. Um, you can do things like this. But again, you can if you watch the whole game and, um, and try and keep track of every player, you will get something out of that that will help your soccer IQ in general. But it's not going to be specialized to your position. So I always find it's great to kind of narrow it down to your position um, and focus on that player. Again, you can do, you know, do it one way and then the other way next time where one time you just focus on your position and then you analyze another match where it's everything. Um, but for the most part, I find that analyzing the player just playing in my position is more effective. So another good thing you can do is actually get out a pen and paper or a pad and pen and write down some things while you're watching the player. Now you want to look out for certain things and have some certain questions on your mind as things are happening. You want to be continually analyzing each play that your player is involved in um, to see what you should be applying to your own game. So for example, if I'm watching Harry Kane play and he makes a certain run, I want to be asking myself, why did he make that run? Run. What was the, the point of making that run? Obviously, he had a plan in mind. What actually happened and what did he plan on happening? If, uh, for example, your player does a move or opens up space or something or makes a good decision, why did he do that? You know, ask yourself these questions because when you come to the answers, you'll realize, oh, I should be focusing on these things as well. Maybe, for example, he picked out one pass instead of another really obvious pass and you have to ask yourself, why did he do that? You can even pick up on the mistakes of the players you're watching. So, again, if we're using Harry Kane as an example and I'm watching him and he makes a mistake, I can go, okay, why did that mistake happen? What could he have done instead in order to not make that mistake? That's that's very important as well. You can learn from the mistakes of others. In fact, it's a great thing to do so that you don't make those mistakes when you go into your match. Okay, and I already mentioned this briefly, but you want to see what the player is doing off the ball. Now, I understand that sometimes for certain positions, the camera will not be on them, so you kind of have to do this as well as you possibly can, but for whenever the player you're analyzing is on the pitch, watch him. Watch what he does. Does he make certain runs? Does he kind of start walking and then burst into space? What positions does he take up? You know, what does he do with the ball when he has it? What does he do when he doesn't have the ball? How does he make himself available for the ball? How does he open up space with different runs and movement for his teammates? By the end of the match, I want you to pretty much answer a few questions about the performance of your player. Now, um, let's consider that they had a good match. I want you to ask, what were some of the common things or things they did over and over again consistently? So, was there a common theme among their play? Um, so, for example, were they shooting a lot? Were they doing a certain move a lot? Did you notice, for example, um, if you're watching Suarez, you may have noticed that he uses the chop move a lot. That's something to note because there's a reason he's doing it more than once. Is there a certain run being used more than once? Is there some space that they occupy more than once? Is there a certain play they try and do more than once? Once you start picking up on these patterns, you can start trying to figure out why these are going on. Why are they doing these specific things that you're writing down and you've observed over and over and over again? Because this is by design. There's a reason they're doing certain things over and over again. And one of the 
probably most likely reasons is they're practicing these things over and over again in training so that they can do them consistently in matches. So that's something to take into account. What are, are the common themes? What is the player you're analyzing doing very often? Another thing to consider is what did not work for them. What is something they didn't do that often, but when they did try it, it didn't work. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you won't be doing these things. It could just be it didn't come off, but it's still good to note these things. Maybe, you know, he tried shooting from 35 yards and that went horribly and he didn't try that again. Um, where opposed to um, 25 yards or closer, he shot and it was very effective. Um, you know, there was a certain run he kept making that was never, you know, never got him the ball. But there was another run he was making which got him the ball often. You know, making these comparisons will um, kind of it'll seep into your mind and you'll start to recognize these patterns when you're in matches as well. So you don't only want to identify what it is he was doing often that worked, identify what he was doing that wasn't working. Now, some of these will also be specific per position. For example, defensive positions, you'll be asking different questions than attacking positions. For example, if I'm I'm, a, I'm an attacking player, so if I was watching a certain player, I would ask things like, what skill moves is the player using often and when is he using them? That's a good question to ask. Uh, again, like I mentioned, what runs is the player making and when is he making them? I would ask, when does he seem to check to the ball? Um, when does he seem to make this certain play? When does he seem to move into this space and why does he move into that space? If you're asking yourself these things and then answering these questions, you'll start to recognize why they're doing these things. And again, then you can apply it to your own match. Okay, and after you've done that, you've basically analyzed the performance of the player, what was working, what wasn't, you can pretty much write down, what can I apply to my own game? Remember, the whole point of analyzing these matches is to get something out of it that will be applicable to your own game. Of course, watching these will also improve your soccer IQ, which will be applicable to your own game, but you don't want to just analyze the player and then not relate it to yourself. So once you've analyzed everything, then you go, okay, this is what it was. This is what happens. These are the patterns I'm seeing. How can I apply this to my game? And then you can start making training sessions that maybe work on things you saw this player doing often. You can start to come up with ideas of things you can do in matches things of this nature. So then you need to look at your own game and go, which things that I've identified, and you'll start to see a pattern after you analyze a few different matches or you watch a certain player over and over again that you're trying to emulate. You'll start to see a pattern of what you should be practicing. But that's when you need to start asking yourself, what should I be taking from their game and applying to my own? Everything else you've done before that is useless if you don't apply it to your own game or don't relate it to your own game because the whole point of analyzing these matches is to make you a better player. So definitely try this, definitely watch a lot more matches in general anyway, that's just going to help you get a, a higher soccer IQ and learn new things, but when you deliberately sit down to analyze something, it's going to benefit you so much more than just passively watching a match. Again, nothing wrong with that, I still do that just to enjoy the match, but try and analyze some matches as I think it can be very beneficial. Okay, that'll do it for this video, please like and share this video if you enjoyed this content, also make sure that you hit that subscribe button if if you're new to the channel, we release videos every single day to help you become a better player. I will put two videos on the screen as well to help you continue to improve and get better, and I will see you in the next video.